E3 is closing in again and tension is rising. There's been a lot of memorable moments throughout the Electronic Entertainment Expo's history. Gaming history has been made there, as well as a good number of goofs. For this year's E3, we're hoping for some equally epic moments. We've collected 10 of the most heartwarming and soul-crushing moments from past E3s, with the hopes that they'll be topped at this year's edition. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. Use the link in the description and save 75% on a three-year plan. Switch to NordVPN to protect yourself today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Here's the 10 best and worst moments in E3 history. YouTube prank star Jesse Wellens delivered massive cringe at the 2017 E3, reveal of Need for Speed Payback. He seems so confident. So we get to the event, we get all checked in. I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm gravy if there's a tele teleprompter. There's no way I'm gonna mess this up. I'm, I'm gonna have no problems at all. I can shut my brain off, not overthink it. I got two more acts happening. But then he got caught off guard by the show going live. And let's just say, things got pretty awkward. What up, guys? Thank you for having me, EA. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Jesse Wellens, and I am a YouTube creator. So I am here. I got my boy Marcus, executive producer here. He is the producer of the game. Thank you, Nick, for having me. Hey, man. Thanks, Jesse. Um Fortunately, he's got enough faith in himself to turn that frown upside down. I was almost like a genius would have done it on purpose. In 2013, Xbox went full evil by announcing the implementation of a DRM system that restricted the sharing of Xbox One games. Every box game would be registered to a console and resale would be controlled by selected parties. Of course, there was an enormous outcry amongst gamers who had the crazy idea that they should own what they had bought. Smelling that Microsoft was on its knees, Sony used 2013's E3 to deliver the final blow. First, they announced Sony's totally opposite policy regarding used games. PlayStation 4 won't impose any new restrictions on the use of PS4 games. Hear that crowd? That's the sound of money going down the toilet for Microsoft. And then Sony did this. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. Shots fired. Yeah, the PS4 had outsold the Xbox One two to one. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kaz Harai. Sony slung some memorable goofs in 2006. Some legendary cringe was spouted by super important vice president, Kazuo Kaz Hirai. Game is powered by Namco. It's Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. Remember that one? All right. Like any PlayStation that's ever been launched, the PS3 was a huge deal. And where the price of the original PlayStation was one of its key selling points, that wasn't the case for the PS3. As can be felt from the silence after Kaz announced the retail price to the crowd. Three will be available in Europe and Australasia on November 17th, 2006. We will sell the 20 gigabyte PlayStation 3 for 499 euros and the 60 gigabyte PlayStation 3 for 599 euros, including VAT. We will be ramping up production to meet the already unprecedented demand for... But despite its steep price, the PS3 still outsold the Xbox 360. The final blow with the silly stick that killed this press conference was dealt by Bill Rich, the executive producer of Genji 2. What's Genji 2, you ask? We'll let Bill explain that in his own words. Uh, Genji 2 is an action game which is based on Japanese history. Uh, being based on history, 
The um, stages of the game will also be based on famous battles which took, actually took place in ancient Japan. For example, this battle of uh, Ichinotani. So here's this giant enemy crab. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. It's tripping. There's strong statements, there's boss moves, and then there's absolute atomic mic drops. This took place at the first ever E3 in 1995, and Sony kicked down the door by putting the kibosh on the competition right from the get-go. The genius setup was this. Sony Computer Entertainment CEO Olaf Olafsson purposely gave a boring presentation, full of info nobody was really interested in. And then this. I'm going to ask Sony Computer Entertainment President of America, Steve Reyes, to join me for a brief presentation. Besides its library of games, the PlayStation's low price was one of its keys to success. We're happy this boss moment was captured on film. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ubisoft's very own Mr. Caffeine, Aaron Priceman. So, this guy's stage name is Mr. Caffeine. What does that even mean? Is he twitchy but unmotivated? Is he some kind of superhero that doesn't need sleep but is dangerously grumpy? Hey, I'm Aaron Breisman here in the second largest French-speaking city in the world. Or is it all just a stupid gimmick from pitchman Aaron Priceman? I'm Aaron Priceman, and with me tonight, Dr. Thomas Bauer. We're ready for our next guest. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Check this out. 2011 was Ubisoft's 25th anniversary. And to commemorate the company's rich history, a special press conference was organized. The only problem was, it was presented by Mr. Caffeine. Throughout the presentation, he slammed the cringe on the attending audience with classics like... Well, I guess I now know where not to take the kids on vacation this year. Hey, wanna come over and play my Wii? We should connect. And thanks to the Sony Move, here, hold my joy wand. Yes, I'm not afraid of a few dick jokes, thank you. And this absolutely epic fail right here, yikes! Yeah. But what was remembered the most was his doodly doodly do time travel sound effect every time a video is shown. Which was totally not a corny reference, by the way. Sorry, I'm late. Did you bring any coffee? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's What's it's the freaking it? What's it's happening? happening? It's happening! If this isn't it. <laughs> By some of the reactions, you'd think that these people had won the lottery. But in fact, it's something that's going to cost them money. At last, the promise has been made. The Final Fantasy VII Remake The original Final Fantasy VII is widely considered to be one of the most influential games in history. It was a benchmark in visual design, storytelling, and game music. It also massively boosted the popularity of the PlayStation and Japanese role-playing games in general. Final Fantasy VII came out in 1997, which means that most kids who played it back in the day were susceptible to maximum nostalgia when Square Enix announced the remake in 2015. Hear that crowd's reaction. It's like every team from every sport around the world just became champions. Remember Jamie Kennedy from the Jamie Kennedy experiment. But what he'd like you to forget is his 2007 hosting gig for Activision. 
Jamie showed up under the influence of either drugs, booze, or sleep deprivation. How's everybody doing? Yeah. This is exciting. We're at E3. And uh, I just want to say this place is the only place that makes the guys at Comic-Con look like Ocean's 13. We don't know what it was, but it made him look totally out of it. He didn't seem to understand what he was there to do from the beginning. All he did while on stage was look dazed and confused and insult the guests he was supposed to interview. In motion capture or just getting on video and then seeing it play it on the game, especially with the new consoles, it just looks, it looks real. Okay. So if you're grabbing, you're, the way you grab your trick, it's... Yeah. No, but for real, it, you know, you like... You grab your trick, and then... Yeah, you, I grab the trick, yeah. And then you, they can grab their trick. Mm -hmm. And we hope one day, Jamie, you get to grab a trick. Hey, I grab, <laughs> I grab tricks every Friday, but... And why not insult the audience while you're at it? Uh, I see some virgins in the audience. We guess that when it comes to causing cringe... I ain't got nothing on me! I Nintendo always brings the goods, and in 2005, they shook the convention center with the reveal of their Nintendo Revolution. It was a pretty intense presentation overall, because why not kill the competition while you're at it? We'll be nice and ignore how ugly his PowerPoint slides were. But before we get to the main event, there were also two other great events at this conference. The reveal of the Game Boy Micro and the reveal of Shigeru Miyamoto being a smooth operator with the ladies. Would you like me, uh, would you like me to show you a few more tricks? Yeah, that would be great. I appreciate okay. it. <laughs> then please follow me okay. backstage. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Mr. Miyamoto! Hi, but the real main event was the reveal of the Nintendo Revolution, as was the codename of the Nintendo Wii. Not only was it a ballsy piece of hardware that took a risk by investing in motion controls and miraculously making it work, but the way it was presented was also really cool. The president of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata, just took it out of his pocket and showed it to the crowd. We've got one. He just held it up in the sky like he'd found it by accident. A pretty nonchalant way to present your multi-million dollar investment. When Microsoft's Motion Tracker Connect was released, many people expected minority report style interactions, slick, smooth, and from the year 2054. But instead, it was 2010, the year of the Vuvuzela. And the Connect was pretty much a toy. So we got this. You ever wonder what the bottom of an Avatar shoe looks like? What bam There it is. All right. The cringe at the Kinect presentation was unprecedented. Adults were playing games enthusiastically because they had to. And child actors were overacting like they got acting lessons from Nicolas Cage. That's enough. Please. <laughs> I hate Nicolas. <laughs> I hate Kittle. Dancing is the spice of life and will knock anybody for not getting their groove on. So you can decide for yourself if this makes you chuckle. At the top of this list, it can't be anything other than something with Nintendo power. Everything Nintendo does is charged with a pop culture nostalgia that's even unique in the melodramatic world of video game fandom. At the 2004 E3, Nintendo was nearing the end of their presentation, and people were getting ready to leave. Then, they announced there was going to be one last thing. Riders of Doom, an epic piece of music from Conan the Barbarian to get the crowd pumped. <laughs> Presenting The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess. And then an epic moment in gaming history 
unfolded before our very eyes. When Shigeru Miyamoto appeared, we're sure some manly tears were shed. That's it for the best and the worst from E3's history. What do you expect from this year's convention? Will they have learned their lesson and will the cringy moments be avoided this year? Or are you hoping for epic moments on both sides of the spectrum? Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and let us know what you think in the comments.